Uh, what I'm going to show today is a specific technique, kind of a crutch or training wheels type of way to throw a bowl. Uh, I learned this from watching a really old VHS tape, aging myself here, but um, from Robin Hopper, my dad, who is the one who's responsible for me doing pottery. I uh, used to have me sit and watch uh, tutorials with him, even though I wasn't really into pottery at the time. I was a little guy, three, four, or five years old, but he'd watch them part of his job and passion and profession and whatnot, but uh, he would show me Robin Hopper, a great potter, um, I believe origins from the UK, but later lived in uh, Canada, but really good potter, used this technique, uh, particularly on stoneware to throw uh, bowls, platters, pretty large ones too. This one I got five pounds precisely, so I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll get to the point uh, once I get there. With this much clay, I do like to use both hands. And I just kind of back and forth. I don't need to cone this up too much. Um, I wedge this clay beforehand as well. Anything over three pounds, I wedge. just kind of tidbits, tips and tricks for this large of amount of clay, particularly for my students. Some of my students have smaller hands, so you might want to push here, moisture, push on the side, and instead of using your thumb like this, sometimes it benefits my students or people with smaller hands to do this little karate chop on top. I've even seen students use fists, almost forearms, basically, all kinds of things. As long as it gets nice and level across the top. And you'll see me swipe my sponge over it. Sometimes a dry sponge like this, then I dry anyway. Just to kind of see if there's, I got all the wiggles out of it. Sometimes it's hard to see when it looks like this. Kind of looks like it's wiggling just from the hand motions that went over it. So that's centered and ready. So now I'm going to open. I hold my sponge in my hand with a little bit of water just in case as I'm opening down and then later opening out. If I feel it drag, I'll just give a little spritz. Okay, another little approach here. Set this aside. Instead of just using your thumb, that's my favorite way to do it, but some people like to use what we call a viper grip, but it's like a little snake, like this. You might want to push down in with the two hands, doesn't matter which one's over the top, as long as you're pulling on the side that's a little bit closer to you, off, just off the center. Okay, So instead of going this way, you would go this way here and push straight down. Some people it's a little more stable, but I prefer the thumb. Little chunk of clay there. I'm gonna take my thumb, go down. I'll open just a little bit just to check my depths as far as how thick the bottom of my clay is. And I check it right after I compress too. I want to give myself a false impression, then compress, and it's thinner than I thought it was, or than I measured. So it's a little more than a quarter inch, which is ideal for me. Uh, if I want a really deep foot, sometimes I'll do half inch. Any more than that, uh, especially in taller forms, which this is not, I feel like I just can't dig as much clay if I leave it too deep. Now I'm going to open out a little bit more, actually quite a bit more on this. I'm going to open almost to the end of my bat here, so probably somewhere out here just past those bolts, my bat bolts. 
This is where I want to make sure that not only do I stay nice and level to where I measured on the floor, but I also want to make sure that I'm nice and stable. This is where a lot of my students get a little willy-nilly, get a little wild, uh, lose a little bit of control. And it's primarily because you've got to be slow but firm when you go. And then when you get to where you want to go, opening-wise, you've got to hold still for quite a few turns. And the wider out here it is, the more distance the wheel needs to travel. In here, it's a little tiny circle. Out here, it's going to be a big circle. Um, some recentering sometimes is in order as well. So I'm going to open out towards myself, keeping my elbows locked in. There, start to drag, add a little moisture. See how squirrely it's getting right there? So, I'd like to pretend I did that on purpose, but I'm not worried about it. I've thrown enough of these and enough times to know that I can recenter this. Put it back into center. I put in three points of pressure pressure on the side, pressure on the top and pressure on the inside and just square it back up. So that's about as far out as I'm going to go. I'm going to compress this whole bottom. And I go back. I don't care whether I start inside and work my way in or vice versa, as long as I go over it a couple of times. I also want to make sure that's super flat there. So I usually take a rib, this one I'm going to use a wooden one, and I place it right in there and just see if there's any marks after I apply pressure. If there's any marks of moisture, like slightly here, I know that's the spot I wasn't hitting, so I need to flatten that out a little more. I could really dig in there with the rib if I wanted to flatten it that way, but you're not going to see much of that. when I go over it with the sponge. Okay, so now, again, I'm gonna recenter this, throw it off again. Also got a clump of clay in there I just felt. So this will push that into the clay that was in the inside from that rib, so I'm digging into it. Pushed it out to the outside. So now I just forced it back in. So now I'm going to just heighten this wall and kind of thin it out just slightly before I pull. Okay, and I don't like sharp edges when I throw, so I'm going to smooth that out just slightly. Now I'm ready. So now I'm ready to pull. I'm going to pull. I could pull out, but I just want to show kind of an exaggerated way of doing this, this uh, broomstick method. I'll slow my wheel down just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to really squeeze and I'm going to pull this one straight up. Normally I pull a little bit out, but this one I'm going to go straight up. Sometimes if I'm doing that small of a pull, which wasn't really anticipated to be honest, but um, I will pull that straight up. But normally I get a dig and I pull out. I'm not being cautious, say for the sake of the video. But I'll pull out first at a 45 degree angle, and then I'll use the broom. But here, pulling straight up first, just to show you how much this broom handle can really help.
should be compressing the lip after each pull. I think I might have skipped that last one, but should always compress, especially on these where I'm going from a, a narrow cylinder and I'm going to stretch it so far out that this lip is going to thin. So sometimes I'll thicken that lip. I'll try to get it on the camera side here, but I'll hold the walls just so I can push down and I don't collapse the walls, but I'll thicken the lip quite a bit. I right, still got another pull or so before I use the broom. I really want to get all this clay down here into the bowl itself. So I'm not just wasting clay and have to trim all that up. I'm going to use as much as I had planned, especially if I'm making sets of these. I want to uh, weigh them out and use that as one of my precise calculations besides just using a ruler because this one was exactly five pounds. So you'll see me slowly reduce the amount of water too. Water softens clay and it'll weaken the walls, especially when I'm going to be flaring it out so far. So again, normally I'd be going out at a 45 right now, but I just want to show the effectiveness of the broom handle as sort of a, a crutch or a training wheel. And I usually don't introduce this to my students right away because I don't want them to rely on this. I don't want this to be the only way. I want them to try it without this, the broomstick. But I sometimes get some students that'll struggle with this shape or this type of form. And so then I want to show them the broom handle and uh, I have to show them each individually. So it's going to be nice to have this in video form or format. So just getting the water out of the inside. A little throwing sponge, which I love and adore. It doesn't absorb much, so I use a regular sponge for this one. Okay, so now we're ready for the broom handle. Finally, so this is literally a mop that um, some of our staff here used, and they break them every once in a while, so I'll take them, and they know to bring them to me at this point, because I ask for them. I always ask for strange knickknacks and trash and all kinds of other things. But I take them, um, sand them down, cut them into little snippets, like little, I don't know what these are, about 14 inches long. And then I round one end. Most of them at the ends are rounded, but I cut them into segments. So some of them have a, a flat side. And I do one round, one flat, just so that I can serve various purposes. But this round one is the one I use at the very base of my bowl. So I'll stretch it first and then just talk about variations. First, I'm going to wet the stick or the broomstick before I prepare for my, uh, my witchcraft here. And I'm going to place that round side all the way down in what is the crevice. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but here's the floor of my clay. Here's the wall. I'm going to place that knob right there and I'm just going to tilt the broomstick. I'm not going to move that. I don't want to dig this into the bottom of my pot, but I'm going to place it in there. And I'm just going to slowly tilt like that. This works really well for my students for uh, not only large platters, plates, but also for what we call the fantasy bowl. Fantasy bowl, they build a little village inside. Hold my breath a little bit here. So you can see my lip was pretty thick when I started and now it's thinned out as I stretch it out the lip gets thinner and thinner. Also the wooden stick, um, I added moisture to it to let it slide but um, you can see it dries the clay out over time as I stretch it. That water all just kind of whisks away or squeegees away. So when I started I start with this knob right there in the bottom. And I slowly just tilt, tilt, tilt. Okay, and I'm kind of going over more than I normally would. Just to show you the effectiveness of the technique. Again, just a broom handle. Then I'll go back in and clean all my wounds up here. Try not to drop too much water on there because it will collapse. So 
I said a second ago before I started with the broom handle that I'd show you, or talk about at least, um, some of the other approaches. I know some of these uh, modern bowls these days, or platters, especially I like to watch a lot of uh, food shows and food network stuff, and a lot of these nicer restaurants, they're doing bowls that kind of have a lot of wasted space to be honest, but the bowl inside is like a little trough, little concave trough, and you could throw up a huge wall and don't put the knob all the way down and tilt out, you would start a little higher and then tilt out so you have that extra rim and then just the serving bowl. See them all the time, especially in the molecular gastronomy. Gastronomy, there we go, tongue twister for me. Um, but uh, in this case, I just wanted to throw a nice open platter. Keep in mind when you throw a platter this big, uh, they do, when they dry, they fold up a little bit. Meaning, you may have thrown it out this far and this is how wide or how flat you want it to go. And when it dries, it's going to pull up just a little bit. So the rest of this is just clean up. Um, if I had a brass uh, rib, that would work really well here. Because I've got a few little humps and bumps that I would take my, my rib to here. Uh, the rib, if you had a huge rib like this, you wouldn't even need the broom handle. Broom handle it's basically what the broom handle is acting as, a big old rib. I will say, um, this technique, like I said, I learned from Robin Hopper. Um, doesn't work quite as well on porcelain. Porcelain's a little more sticky, and uh, if that's the, the adjective I am hoping for there. But it tends to give a sort of chattered look to it. It still works, but it's uh, it leaves like a little pattern inside. So um, the rest of this is just shaping, but that's the gist of and cleaning up. But that's the gist of the broom handle. Nice platters thrown, very simply.